Hey, what's up, everyone? I just wanted to talk real quick about Miranda um, in the context of having just watched a video about <clears throat> a former Marine named uh, Rob, or Rob Brandon, um, who was apparently taken in by police um, for expressing his dislike with the American government. I'm not sure of all the details, um, you know, to the extent of, you know, what he said or this or that. Um, but uh, there was an interview with his mom, and you can actually listen to it, like, below. And it highlighted uh, a misconception on uh, Miranda rights for me, because she kept mentioning how um, her son, when he was arrested, was not read his Miranda rights. And uh, Miranda rights are actually um, uh, not needed to be read, um, technically. Uh, they're not actually... Um, a matter of legal procedure that is required for you to be given if you're arrested, um, per se. Really, what Miranda does is it uh, prevents statements from coming in um, where you are in custodial interrogation. Um, and custodial interrogation is something that is <laughs> a never-ending debate um, about where it begins, where it ends. Generally speaking, uh, custodial interrogation usually looks like the police have you in a position where you're not free to leave and there's like a kind of significant restraint in your liberty. One of the most obvious instances of this, um, where it begins, is, you know, if you're arrested. You know what I mean? That's why on TV you typically see police, you know, they arrest somebody and they do the whole Miranda speech. You know, you have the right to remain silent. You know, anything you say, <laughs> say can be used against you to court law. You write to an attorney, you know, and that, you know, if you can't afford one um, and you're indigent, you know, one can be appointed for you. Um, but really it's, you know, it's not, it's not something that's like a legal procedure meant to, uh, keep you from being arrested. It just is that if police, after putting you into that custodial situation, for example, like an arrest, um, after they do that, if they ask you questions related to the crime for which you're being arrested, that's when they're supposed to read you your rights so that those statements can be used against you. It's not that, you know, it's preventing the charge or anything like that. It's just simply so that they can get incriminating statements from you. And, you know, whenever um, you read your Miranda rights, then, of course, you have the option to remain silent. You can ask for an attorney, which is the best thing you can possibly do because if you ask for an attorney, they can't really talk to you again. They're supposed to bring you an attorney. There's, of course, some exceptions. You know, a time lapse, typically um, two weeks, is that uh, is that golden number, um, at least it's from the Supreme Court's view of when they can come back to you. Or if um, you're being held on one charge, for example, let's just say they arrest you for, I don't know, something stupid like possession of marijuana, right? And you're being held in jail overnight, and then they come to investigate you about a potential burglary that's completely unrelated. Well, they can ask you questions without giving you, uh, you know, your, uh, without giving you the, those warnings potentially um, if you've already asked for an attorney because uh, technically it's, it's about another... Uh, another case and so they can get around at least the, re the attorney requirement portion of um, you know the Miranda protections so those are just you know a you know side little issues just to know about but the core meat of this is that Miranda isn't something that's like ooh you know without Miranda <laughs> you uh, are immediately released it's only your statements that it's protecting and it's only if they're interrogating you about the relevant crime when you're in custody of police. And, uh, you know, this doesn't include, you know, generally speaking, um, t you know, the typical things like being stopped for a speeding ticket, you know, police can usually ask for things like that. Sometimes they can do it when it's a reasonable suspicion stop. Um, but there, it, there is this, there is a line that has ne that's never been firmly um, drawn out. Uh, it's usually a totality of the circumstances test. But there isn't a firm line where it's just a stop or where it's a, you know, custodial interrogation. I mean, there's t there are things that would make it obvious, you know, if they take you to the police station or they arrest you, that's, that's clearly custodial, but there's a lot of gray area, you know? Um, so I just wanted to clear up that misconception, also highlight this scary thing that, you know, the government does scan, um, YouTube, Facebook, everything like that, and they try to get people, especially, I think in this case, it might have been because he was a former Marine, and, and government really does not like ex-military speaking out against it, um, but, uh, 
you know, that you, you really have to know your rights and you have to know how to flex them and you have to know that, you know, simply not being read your rights is not doesn't mean anything. You know, <laughs> you're arrested, you're arrested, that's too bad. Now if they try to get incriminating statements from you, then that's an that's another thing, but then it's still a suppression hearing. It's still, oh, uh, here's a here's a motion saying why those, you know, statements were given um, without a proper Miranda warning or, you know, there's other types of funky little side issues, you know, where police play a game, um, you know, to intentionally interrogate somebody for hours on end without getting them Miranda. And then once they finally confessed, then they give Miranda warnings. And they try to get them to sign the statement, you know, cores and confessions, obviously that's, you know, another issue, but the core, the, the core principle here is that, you know, it's not about the Miranda. It's not the Miranda is, um, kind of a perfunctory thing that's related to side issues, but it's not really going to the meat of your arrest. Yeah, you might not have been Mirandized when you're arrested, but that doesn't change your arrest. You know what I mean? It might change it if you say something incriminating and they're asking you questions, interrogating you, but if you just sit there in the back of a cop car and you start saying, I committed all these crimes, well, that's too bad. If they weren't interrogating you or acting in a way to elicit a response, it's just meaningless. So uh, check out the links, you know, think about that. You know, it's a big misconception that people have. You know, Miranda is not, you know, law and order, <laughs> CSI, like the magic cure, like, oh, read me my rights that, you know, it really doesn't have any bearing on your arrest generally. It's it's more about um, incriminating statements. And of course, um, in some instances, if there's something related to you're getting an attorney, especially if you're indigent, but it's not usually going to come up um, as much as the statement aspect, uh, the attorney aspect is not going to usually come up with a lack of Miranda because uh, there's usually a public defenders or something like that who do intake on people um, when they first come in. So that's how come that doesn't come up as much. But uh, if you have any questions, comments, whatever, uh, feed below, like, share, and uh, really let people know about the scary abuses that are going on and are coming um, for those who wish to speak out against uh, the government. All right. Take care, guys, and I'll talk to you later.